What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build here for Better Hallway Vision. Alright guys, ever since I got the rotary attachment for the X-Tool D1, uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it right here. Uh, people have been asking me if the laser can etch glass. And the short answer is no. Until next time, thanks for playing. And now I've got to get to work. Just kidding, kind of. Um, that is the short answer. The long answer is, with a carrier agent, yes you can. You can get beautiful results like this. Check it out, I'll put my hand behind it so you can see a little bit better. That's on there too, like check this out. Nick, you ask, what is said carrier agent? And honestly, uh, th there's a bunch of different ones out there. What I used and what seemed to work really well was cold galvanizing compound. I will link to this down below. I will drop a link to like Amazon or whatnot just so you can see it. I probably wouldn't order it on Amazon. It's gonna be like three times as expensive. Go to like Home Depot or anybody that carries like Rust-Oleum products and pick up the cold galvanizing compound. And I don't completely understand the science behind it. And for whoever guy is gonna put like in the comment, well, if you don't understand the science, then don't make this video. Please explain to me like from beginning to end how a combustion engine works. And if you can't, don't drive your car. The way I understand it is it works similarly, <laughs> can't say the word today, uh, to, to the indelible white tile method that I did. I will link that right here as well if you wanna check that out. But, but the titanium dioxide that is contained within uh, this cold galvanizing compound and certain spray paints, when it's heated with the laser, somehow bonds with the surface of the tile or the glass. They so etch, etched it into the glass, but that's not going anywhere as far as I can tell. Okay, I'll take you through the process today. We will clean these guys up. We will take them outside, spray them down, let them dry. Um, this I let dry for like maybe an hour before I did it. We'll bring them back in. We will get the laser set up and we will engrave us some stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Now, let's get to work. So I picked some glasses up at the thrift store and these are filthy. I don't know how well you can see that, but they, and they have marker on them, but I would say even if you bought a brand new glass, you will wipe it down first. Uh, the first time I went to do one of these, I took it outside. When I sprayed the compound on it, you could literally see fingerprints pop up on it. I'm gonna get, get us a little uh, clean spot on our rag here. We are going to find us a church key. We're gonna pop this bad boy open and we'll wipe these guys down. A little music maestro. You just want to coat it. So I try to, try to get them a little bit both ways, but I want to make sure I get a good coating on there. All right, I'm going to speed this up while I set this up, just so you guys got to get an idea. But if you want to see how easy this is to set up, go check out that video I mentioned earlier. I guess I'll link it down below too. But the setup for the rotary for the D1 is so easy. Guys, okay, so we have our coated glasses. I did both sides just in case we want to mess around. Uh, but right now I want to pick an image uh, to do on here. And this is a test run for a skull idea that I have to put on one of these guys. Uh, so we're going to get it in the, uh, we'll get it in the rotary and then we'll hop over in the computer. I'll show you the image that I'm using. I've already inverted it. Uh, because we want, to, we want to cut out, like the dark part would cut out and we want the, we want the dark part, or we want the white part of the skull to be the stuff that stays, right? So it, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So we're just gonna set this guy right here on the rotary. Okay, so we just wanna adjust our laser 
I'm doing the thumb screw on the other side, we'll lift it up so this is above our piece. We can see our crosshairs there. Drop the kickstand and that is gonna be our focal length. Once I hit that, I'm going to tighten this thumb screw back, put the kickstand back up. And for this, let's see, I think we're gonna do it on this side. A couple things you wanna know. So I had this pretty much square in there. It's always hard to get a read on, I don't know if you can see that. Hold on a second, let me turn the lights off. So you can see the crosshairs a little bit more. The crosshairs aren't nearly as helpful on the rotary because it, it's, it kind of veers off here because it's going around the corner. So you kind of got to get up over and then I look over the rails to try to line everything up. But we're pretty much in the middle there. And the other thing you want to do, which I didn't do earlier, is just get a measurement off of this. And right now, so this is a, a little over 100 millimeters tall. So we'll shoot for about 80 in the middle, maybe 70. Okay, so here we are, we're in laser box already. I already pulled my image in. I don't know if you can tell, but this has been inverted from the original, I think. <laughs> so uh, we are gonna do kind of the same thing we've done before. We are going to, uh, remember we wanna flip this to the left, not to the right. So we wanna go 270, which is three quarters of a revelation, right? Um, I said we're gonna go about 75, right? 75, let's go that. And then we're just gonna zoom in on the image. Space bar down to get your grabby hand. And then we're gonna come over here. Um, and then we are gonna check these out. Sharpness, usually pull that up. I'm not sure how this is gonna do yet. So this is, this is all a big test right now. Um, so we're gonna go default. Uh, I think last time, what did I do? I think it went stainless steel as the settings. I hope, let's try coated metal. Actually coated metal will probably be all right. Okay, and then we're gonna come in to our working area and then always remember to switch this on when you're doing a cylinder. So if the rotary's on, you have to switch this on every time. Also, it is, this is its home right now, this blue dot. I want it right in the middle because I want to see where it's going to face out on uh, the glass. You guys have asked me how to line up uh, with like a logo or something that's already on like the glass or tumbler or whatever. That's how you do it. You uh, bring your, your uh, starting point to center and then, and then base everything off of that. Okay, and then we're going to just run framing real quick. So here, let me show you framing. I'm going to hit framing. It should run up to the top, down to the bottom, and then spin it. See how it's spinning it? That is how you know where your image is gonna be. I'll do it again. So top, bottom, there you go. All right, so I'm gonna turn that, well, actually maybe not. Actually, I think that should be all right. Okay, so now we're just gonna hit go or start and, uh, and let it do its thing, man. Eh? Looks like it's gonna be about seven minutes. Also, uh, laser goggles whenever you're doing this, um, because this stuff, like it actually fires through the glass and it refracts out everywhere. Um, and make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because you are burning paint and you're not, well, and whatever this paint is, the, comp, uh, the cold compound, whatever business, um, galvanized cold compound, is even when you're just spraying it is much more potent than uh, regular spray paint. So make sure that you're wearing um, a good set of goggles and you have some sort of ventilation going on. I have a big exhaust fan that's blowing out the garage right now below us. Okay, fresh off the presses. This is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have to use lacquer thinner to take that off. I see some banding here. I don't think it's the laser though. I might have had it just a little too hot. We'll see if that, that should just come off. Honestly. Get you some lack of thinner. For paint thinner works just fine. <laughs> oh, we did not get a very good image, kids. Wow. I might have gone, I, I might have either, I don't know, man. Did I burn it too hot? Or not enough? That's the question. It's definitely not nearly as good a result as this. Now, I'm not sure why. This is why we do test pieces. This is why these are cheap 
glasses that I picked up at the thrift store. Hmm. All right, let me contemplate. Okay, so we're back again. Um, I went ahead and increased uh, settings. So what I did is, I don't remember the settings for the first one, but the settings for this one were, uh, power was at 100%, speed was 12 millimeters a second. And I'm already, I'm already way more confident about the results, so check that out. I kind of scraped it when I picked it up, but, mm hmm okay. So we're gonna take that off of the little lacquer thinner. Um, while we do, I just wanna say thanks to all you guys for sticking around. Um, I appreciate it, and uh, let me know if there's something you want me to custom etch. Uh, if it's cool and I can make a video about it, um, I might do that, and uh, maybe I'll send it to you. If it's too cool though, I might keep it for myself. I wanna say an extra special thanks to all of my patrons who support me. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, especially my top tier patrons or my Boilermaker patrons. And hold on, I gotta pull my phone out for this because there's been some changes, kids. Changes. Especially Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Jim Carter, Andy the Viking, and Dwight Smith. I, Clinkies? Um, but yeah, if you have not had a chance to check out my Patreon page, go ahead over there and check it out. Uh, join up if that's your thing. Anything that you donate over there directly helps support the channel. And so I would appreciate it if you like the videos, get something out of them. Maybe, maybe throw a little support in there. That would be awesome. Now, results. Shameless plug over. Uh, but I didn't get everything off here, so it's gonna take me just a second. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get her nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. Ready? That's the one on the back. <sighs> Woo -hoo -hoo! Shit! Fill me full of liquor and drink me, baby! Oh, it looks so good. So good. Here, let me. Oh, 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 oh. so good. Oh, f yes. Oh, excuse me. Um, I dig it. I really dig that. That looks really, 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 really good. I am, uh, I'm impressed. Uh, special thanks to the folks over at Heritage Type Company. They have a skull creator kit, um, which they sent me over to use, and that's where I got the skull from. And I'm like, and so you can customize it, you can put hair on them, uh, and mustaches and guns and all sorts of different things. It's a really cool package. Um, I'll link to it down below. Uh, but I might start doing some custom glasses, man. That looks so good. So like, can you imagine like, you know, skull on one side and the other side it says like some cool toast or like don't touch my flipping whiskey or something except it wouldn't say flipping that would it hope you dig it hope you dig it um and so guys without uh without further ado do 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 it's been a while until next time thanks for playing and now i've got to get to work Whoop. get you some lack at dinner um, I'm bringing it back. Was that ever a thing? I don't know where I put it. So let's see. Hello, see? Lucy, wow. Lucy, you got a little... Ricky got a little funky. There once was a boy from Nantucket. Ooh. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. Here.